Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to design a simple logo in Adobe InDesign. So I'm often asked, can you design a logo in InDesign? Yes, you can. There are some limitations in terms of which tools you can use, but if you're just starting out in design and logo design in particular, creating one in InDesign is not a bad idea. Even though this program is used primarily for layout, um, public uh, print publications and things like that, um, you can design a logo and you can export it in different formats uh, for web and print. So I'm going to show you how to create a very simple badge logo just to get you started and then if you get more comfortable you can move on and try it in Adobe Illustrator. But uh, yes, you can design a, a logo in, in InDesign and we show you how to do it. So. This is uh, just a very basic logo and basically what I'm going to show you is how to create the text as well as adding a, um, an illustration. So we are going to add an illustration from um, Illustrator, uh, which I, I have and I will attach to this uh, tutorial if you want to try it out yourself. So let's get started. I have created one here. I'm just going to ungroup it and I'm just going to move this one off to the side because we're going to create a new one here. The first starting point is creating a circle or an ellipse. Okay, so I'm going to go up to, I like to use the frame ellipse. So click and hold on the rectangle frame and select the ellipse frame tool. Make your way into this logo or just create one freely. I want to make it the same size as this. So I'm just going to start in the middle, hold shift, and then I'm just going to match them up. Right now I'm just going to give it a color fill. And I do have some colors here. Don't be so concerned right now about the color scheme. You can do that at the end. Even if you design this in black and white at, to start, that's fine. So that's a good size there. And basically the first thing I want to do is use the type on a path tool to create a path, a type path at the top and the bottom, much like I did here. So we're just going to create a fictional logo for Bruce Peninsula National Park. So. Go to your type tool, click and hold for the flyout. You can also do shift T to uh, bring it up as a shortcut. So I'm going to grab that and notice how I'm hovering over the, the logo here and you see a little plus sign. Once you see the plus sign, go ahead and click. You'll see that you have a blinking cursor now and I'm going to type in Bruce Peninsula and I'm going to, you can just uh, select that. And let's, let's take care of the formatting for, for font right now. Um, I'm going to use, let's see here, um, let's use Gotham, that's one, one that I use there. And for now as a starting point, I'm going to make a 30 point, okay? Now you notice my, my type disappeared, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. The reason for that is I have to, I have to figure out how to set these handles up. And so one handle should be on the left hand side, another should be on the right hand side. And let's, I'm not sure what happened there. Let's do that again, Bruce Peninsula. Okay, so now I have my type there. Actually, before we go even further, grab this selection tool, click on the frame once, and um, do Shift Command C to center it, okay? And then grab these handles. Oftentimes they'll be they'll be in different positions. Grab the longer ones and bring it to the side. Grab the smaller one and bring it to the very top center. This will give you a top. Uh, I'm sorry. This will give you a perfectly centered uh, type. So we have Bruce Peninsula. Now we have to adjust the, the type so it goes inside our circle. So select it. Go to type. Type on a path and options, and I've I've sh I've shown this example in a previous tutorial, but um, I'm going to go over it again. So when you're working in type on a path, select the type. We do want a rainbow effect, but we don't want the type sitting on a baseline. We want it uh, in this case. We want it as a, a sender. Okay. So as you can see now, make sure your preview check is on. You can see that the, the Bruce Peninsula is now underneath. So. Um, where it says two path, just make it to bottom, okay, and hit okay. You can adjust the spacing here. Do you notice how I'm adjusting the spacing? I'm gonna leave that at zero for now. 
I adjust the spacing by tracking it and manually using the baseline shift to adjust that type. Okay, so I'm gonna hit OK. And first thing I wanna do as well is I wanna make this white. And I wanna track this out to about 280, okay? Plus two, positive 280. So a simple way of tracking things out is just holding Option or Alt on a PC and use your right arrow key to bring that out. So there's 220, 240, 260, 280. Now that does seem a little too much, but I'm going to bring it down because you can see it's a little too close to the edge of my, my frame. I'm gonna hold down Shift and Option together. Um, on PC, I believe it's uh, Shift and Alt. So hold Shift and Option and use your down arrow key. This is what's called a baseline shift. So basically I'm taking it and I'm moving it down away from the edge of the circle, okay? So let's go. Let's do that, both that for now. Okay, and we can always adjust this afterwards. So there we go, Bruce Peninsula, that's a good starting point. Now, basically what I wanna do is I wanna add some text below. So I'm just gonna click on the frame, Command C. There is a short for, shortcut for paste and place, Shift Option Command C, or just simply go up to Edit, Paste in Place. And what I wanna do on this top version is not have a fill. So I'm just gonna go to fill and say none. Okay, I'm gonna click that. Hold your shift key. And you notice how my cursor's turned into a rotating cursor. So I'm just gonna rotate that 180 degrees. So Bruce Peninsula, we're gonna make this one say National Park. Yes, it's upside down, we're gonna fix that. So go ahead, highlight that, select it, type. Type on a path, options. Rainbow is fine, but in this case we want descender, okay? And we wanna flip that text, and let's make it to the top, top of the path, hit okay. Now we have to fix this because obviously it's coming out of the circle. So again, shift option and bring that up. Do about there. And the tracking has remained the same as the top, so it's 280, which is fine. And again, these settings can be adjusted as you're working. You're not set to these right away. Okay, so there we go. We have a simple uh, logo badge, and we could use these little circles. I know I, in this case, I'm missing one, but let's grab this here. Do con con actually just do Alt or Option and drag. Let's make that, oh, let's bring it to the front actually. Shift Command Square Bracket to bring it all the way to the front. You can also go to Object Arrange. So what I like to do with this actually is I'm just gonna bring it to the middle of the circle. So there's my Smart Guides telling me, yes, it's centered. And I'm just gonna bring it right to the edge and do Shift, op or shift Right Arrow Key, Shift Right Arrow Key, Shift Right Arrow Key three times. Actually, that might be too much. Let's go back. One, two is good. I'm gonna hold command. Actually, let's do an option drag again. So there, it's telling me they're, they're centered there. Shift, and now that we're gonna use left key, shift, left, left, twice. Now, to make sure that these are, these are actually lined up, I'm gonna click on one, hold shift, click on the other one and go up to your alignment tools up top here. You can also access the actual panel by going to window and where is your alignment? Object and layout and align, that will bring out the actual window, but they're up here and that's fine. They're also in your properties panel. So click on them and go to um, your alignment options. Make sure that they're aligned to the selection and then you want to click this one here, align vertical centers, and they already are. So if it was down here, I'd click both and I align them together, okay? So that's good there. 
just adds a little style to our badge here so that's good okay so now I'm gonna go in and we've taken care of this part now I'm gonna bring this illustration in um, actually before we go even further I want to create another ellipse here and so I'm just gonna do I'm gonna hold shift and uh, option together to constrain the proportions I'm gonna make this one uh, white Oops. Back to my selection tool and let's center this in there make it a little bit bigger something like that yeah that works that's good for now okay so I'm gonna go get that illustration so I'm gonna open up uh, Illustrator for a second so I have a I have a series here of different um, line art illustrations I want this one here the little camp or the hiker so I'm just gonna click on it and Command C. That's how easy that is. And I'm going to do Command V just to paste it in here. Now it comes in as a vector illustration still. That's the good part. You could also import it as an image just by going to File Place and bringing it in. But you lose the flexibility of changing the colors and things. So in this case, just go in, copy it, and bring it over. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to hold my shift key and grab the uh, circle and I'm going to align those horizontal centers. Okay. Now what I want to do is, so in Illustrator you can actually minus the front of what's in an object or a shape. You can do that in InDesign as well. So what I want to do first is this illustration is still grouped. So just go shift command G to ungroup it or just go to object and ungroup. So you can see now it's ungrouped. It's still selected with my selection tool. I'm going to again hold shift and click on the circle. I'm going to make my way up to object pathfinder and subtract okay so basically what we're doing is we're subtracting the top illustration from the shape so it becomes one so let's do that and so now if I bring it over here you notice um, it's just a white it won't show but you can see it's it's see-through now okay so that's good so again this is much like the minus front in Illustrator Okay, so that's it. So um, you're on your way now. That's how you would create uh, a badge logo. And again, this one's just very simple, but you could try different things out. And so what I did down here is I created a series of them. You could play around with the color, see, see what works best. In this case here, I just gave the, um, I gave the badge logo just a stroke with no fill. So basically you have the type and your illustration you notice if I move this out of the way it's just white so I can move that back in and then you can go in and make this any other color you want but basically instead of having the fill I've made it uh, just all white so you could you could put it on any uh, transparent um, put that transparent logo on any background okay and so that would be it so there's your logo and then now when you're done you can go in and start exporting this uh, to the file format you would want so um, I would move this one out of the way because much like an artboard in Illustrator we're gonna create um, a good thing to do also is just group it so command G and with it grouped go back to your alignment panel click the uh, the alignment selections and this time we want it to align to the page I want to align it uh, vertically and horizontally, and there we go, okay? So now, I'm going to export just page one. So it doesn't matter how many pages you have, we can just set it to one. So go up to File, Export, and down below here, you can start um, changing the file format. So PNG, where if you're going to use it for web or JPEG, um, EPS if you want a vector version so you can actually open that EPS in Illustrator and work on a vector format of that logo okay 
Um, actually, I'll just show you an example. So let's go back and do that. I'm just going to save it on my desktop and I'm going to make it a uh, PNG or let's do EPS and I'm gonna hit save. And so if you're doing just one page or um, just act as if it's an artboard, instead of all pages, select ranges. And then in this box, type one, we do want pages. And then here are some other settings you can um, look into. And then just hit, um, actually, let's go to export, um, advanced, high resolution, um, all this other stuff you can leave the same. And then you would just export that and it would be on your desktop and it would be transparent so you can open it in Photoshop or Illustrator and continue from there. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Follow me on YouTube for more tutorials to come and uh, have a great day. Take care. Bye now.